Hey there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I want to unbox these Arctic Soft Pastels. Basically, I just want to show them in their beautiful, clean, pristine glory, because I'm going to use them, and they're not going to be so beautiful, clean, or pristine anymore. So, um, when you see me come back in this video, time will have elapsed, and I will have created with them. But let's take a look and see how they appear when they're brand new. So we've got a nice chipboard box. It's got foam on the top there, kind of like a, a craft foam. And then we have an overlay that's like kind of a vellum. And on the overlay, it gives you uh, a star rating, which I'm assuming is your light fast rating. Let's turn this around here. Um, and you've got kind of a little bit of a color swatch. And yeah, it's, it tells you what pigment number is in each of the pastels. So this is nice. I have never seen this information with an overlay on pastels before. Sometimes watercolors, but uh, never pastels. So I'm really excited about that. Um, it is a little hard to read. The font is really fine and it's um, it's kind of like they printed everything but the font. So the font is just like the color of the vellum and the uh, um, then you get the swatch around it. So you might want to write down that information if it's important to you. You're also going to want to, if you want to use this overlay as an index, you'll want to make sure you put the pastels back in the same place every time. I think it's going to get pretty smudged and dirty and it's going to be hard to read, but I do like that that, um, uh, that, that is there. And, and then we have our pastels that are in a foam box. There's foam under the pastels and there's a styrofoam around it. All the pastels, we have the color number, like this says S373, and then we've got the Artix logo um, debossed onto the pastel. They, on the, uh, on some of the colors, they're, they're actually debossed and printed, and then on some, they're just debossed. I'm not exactly sure why, but, um, but that's what we have. So I'm going to give these a try, and uh, when we come back, you'll see some finished artwork and hear my thoughts on these and find out whether they are for you. All right, here is the finished peacock piece. I did uh, these really dark blacks were a uh, either a schminka, might have been a Paul Rubens, I'm not sure, a really soft pastel. The white is a schminka white um, that I did the highlights there, but most, and I did some, uh, a little bit of pastel pencil, not a lot, but the majority was done with these Artix soft pastels. Um, they are, I would say, the medium hardness and um, overall though I think using them they were really easy to use. The color selection, um, I'm going to swatch these out because looking at them and I just want to show you that's these are one of the color cube colors. I really love this cube thing. You know if I'm just I just want to have something I just want a reference photo I just pull something out and I just sketch it. You know it's a great way to kind of get rid of the analysis paralysis I get if I'm trying to find the perfect reference photo. This just kind of breaks that up. So I want to show you what that was. I know somebody would ask about it. Um, my tape did rip the edges on my paper, but that's fine. I just wanted to have some edges I could hold this by. Um, yeah, these were fine to use. Uh, it reminded me a lot of the Windsor Newton, the old Windsor Newton pastels. But um, I think what I'm going to do now is grab a couple sheets of paper and do some swatching because I actually feel like I kind of I kind of need to, and then I I need to compare it with some of the other brands I have just to make sure I am making good um, a good comparison. My impression so far, and granted this is only one painting in, is that um, they're kind of on the hard side. Um, they're, they layer okay, but they're not, they're not gonna layer as much as say some, like I really like the Soho pastels because they're, um, they're maybe a little softer than this, but very similar, but they're, they're smoother. They glide a little bit more. They're more buttery where these do feel a little bit harder. Um, some colors felt a little scratchy. Um, so I definitely feel like I need to use these a little bit more. I'm not ready to give an opinion on these. One thing I will say, I do like the box. Um, I will use, take the pastels I've been using and put them in on their end so I know what colors I've used. So I'll go back to those colors. Um, so I do like the packaging quite a bit. The packaging is really nice. Um, so yeah, let's get some paper to swatch with and then come back and, uh, and chat a little bit more about these. All right, I've got a Kansi Mitant here. I've got uh, Ingress paper here. So got a couple just very run-of-the-mill common pastel papers. I'm gonna start off with the Artix White on the textured side of the Mitants and on the Ingress. Now what I want to do is actually do a, uh, I'm just kind of show you the Schmincke White. Look how much more vibrant that is next to that white. And I'm also going to do the black. So if I show you the 
you can see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but that black is definitely not as black as the paper, which is strange. Usually your black pastel will be blacker than the paper. So if I do the shmika, you can see that shmika is blacker than the black of the paper. So these don't, these are a little harder. They don't feel as pigmented. Granted, they are a lot cheaper than shmika. Shmika pastels are quite expensive. So, um, I do want to put that out there. Now these are very similar in price to the Paul Rubens, so I do have a set of Paul Rubens over here. The problem with my my pastel box, I took all the off the all the labels are off my pastels, so I really can't be 100% sure what brand of the pastels that are in there. So I'm also going to grab Paul Rubens white and black just cuz this is a fresh box. I know that that's what they are. So let's compare the Paul Rubens. Now they're not as soft and buttery as the Schmincke, but they are blacker. So, they and they're a little bit softer than the Arctic, but pretty close. They also feel a little drier. Um, I'm just going to wipe my fingers off before I grab the white. Uh, because the Paul Rubens are also available in sets and so uh, comfortably priced, I wanted to compare them really quickly, just at least with a couple colors. So, yeah, the, uh, the white is definitely much more, much more bright. So, um, and the black is much more black. Um, so if you're kind of trying to debate between getting either the Paul Rubens or the Arctics, right now I'm going to say the, the Paul Rubens, they're definitely softer and I feel like the range is a little bit nicer, at least when you look at between the black and the white and the colors I think are a little bit more vibrant. Um, personally, I would choose the Paul Rubens over these. Um, but I also really, I, I, if I had to just pick one pastel to do a piece from start to finish, I would probably go with the Jerry's Outer Rama Soho for a budget pastel, but even if I'm looking at expensive pastels, I like for, for start to finish for, if I had to pick one box, cause I'm going to go plein air painting. I'm still going to pick the Soho pastels. You can get those on Amazon or Jerry's, but let's keep looking at the Arctic's. I know you're not really here for a comparison. You're here to see now that yellow, it looks really nice and vibrant on both the black and the white. When you blend them out, they do become quite a bit more transparent. If you're going to be using them on a dark paper, that's something to, to consider. They're not super smudgeable. I don't know if I'll swatch all these out or not. And obviously the more texture on a paper, the more you're going to see the grain of the paper, whether you like that or not. I like it just because, um, Oh, that one's a nice one. I like it because the more texture your paper is, the more pastel you can hold. So you can keep building up. Oh, that one's really nice. Now this one feels softer, this kind of golden color. That is really nice and buttery. So we do have a little bit of a difference between the colors. And I did notice that, that when I was working that some colors felt a little bit more buttery. Now here on the black, it doesn't look as vi like that. That looks like a nice peach, but when I have it on the black, I feel like I lose the undertone of the peach. And it does show up better on white. So, okay, that's a that's a little concerning that that is translucent. That's more translucent on black, meaning it's kind of like, uh, you know, sometimes you use a pastel color pencil and you color it on black and then you don't have any of the color. Now that that's showing up so much better on white. I might even go as far as to say that I'm going to recommend a light paper for these. So I'm going to have to do another another artwork on lighter paper since the uh, the artwork I did I did on darker paper and I I feel like. These are not the most, these are definitely not the most opaque pastels that I've used. And because of that, that would be kind of a uh, turn off for me. That, although that pink is really nice and opaque uh, because I like to work on toned paper and I like to work on black paper. That pink, is, it might just be the peaches. Maybe it's just the kind of the peach tones that are, that are not so opaque. This one feels a little dry, but it is nice and opaque. I think I used this one on our, on part of our peacock. That's nice and opaque. If you're doing a portrait, you probably wouldn't be working on black paper. You'd probably be working on maybe a sandy paper. Oh, that one's really nice too. So it seemed, these seem to have some really, some really nice colors and then some colors that wouldn't be my, uh, my best. The reds, I'm really liking the reds, the reds and the pinks, but the peaches, I, they, they tend to be too translucent. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, that's really nice. So they're doing really well on the reds. I've got to say that the red tones. I'm so glad you did an unboxing when I first opened these because they're looking really sketchy right now. <laughs> I 
blue is nice. That looks pretty true to life. Generally your pastels will, you know, what you see is what you get because they're an opaque medium, but the paper can, can affect that a bit too. That, that blue is nice, kind of like a cerulean or Copenhagen blue. Now this one feels drier and harder than the previous one. So that might give you a hard time if you're trying to layer, say, this color over that color or this color over a, a softer color. It's not going to want to stick. That's a nice opaque blue. So the blues, the blues are nice. The reds are nice. So far it's been the peaches. So if you're a portrait artist, you might want to pass on these if you're going to rely on those peach colors. That Look how much brighter that looks on the... Um, that's a nice... That's a really opaque color. If you look at how nice it looks on the black, it looks brighter on the black than on the white. Let's see how our purples are. I really like the fact that they have the um, light fast information. The purple seems nice. Oh, this is an interesting color. It's almost like a gray, a gray teal, gray teal color. Well, that's a pretty color. Okay, I guess that's, you know what? I think it's too bad that I started off swatching the peaches because I feel like that kind of, oh, that one's nice and soft. I like that one a lot. That's really soft. Um, so I guess one thing that I'm noticing about this is the inconsistency of the softness and hardness between the colors. Now that one's kind of scratchy. But it, it's opaque. I mean, and you know, some colors are going to have more binder in them. You know, if they're a color that doesn't want to hold together, they might have to use more binder. They might just be, you know, less uh, clay in them. Uh, because they're a darker color and the clay is what gives it that kind of slippy um, blendability, that nice feel. Sometimes you could even have a little bit of a wax in them. I think that the Soho ones might have a little bit of a wax and oh look at that fuchsia, that's really nice. Oh that's buttery, that one's buttery. They all have their own personality. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I like that. I, I'm liking the purples. I'm liking the reds, the purples, and the blues. The yellows, pretty good. Peaches um, are not that great. But we'll probably be fine on like a neutral tone paper. Purples are very nice. I'll have to see what pigments, let's see what pigments they're using in the purples to see if they seem to be light fast. Uh, PB29, PB23, those are good. That would be, and there must be some white there too, I would say, because of how light it is. Uh, PV19, that's a good one. Just looking to see, well, I can't really quite make out that one. What is it? PV, oh, PV19, PV23, PV23, PR122, PV23. PR122, I think that one's pretty good. All right, the purples look like they're not going to be too bad as far as light fastness goes, so that's good. I'm always a little nervous about budget purples because purple's such a fugitive color anyway, and then... You know, if it's cheaper, I'm worried that it's going to fade. But these actually seem pretty good. If the, uh, as long as the, uh, the indexing is correct. Okay, I'm liking these more as I'm going through. I like the purples. The purples are nice and soft. This is a beautiful seafoam green. It is a little bit on the hard side, but it did stick really well on my paper. Um, when that tutorial comes out with the peacock, you can watch that. I, that's what color I started with. This one's quite scratchy, but maybe it's just got a varnish on it. It's like a nice golden green. Yeah, it is kind of, it's scratchy. Sometimes you got to get through like a varnish and then it's soft, but that one does feel, I'm going to, yeah, it's a little scratchy, but not too bad. It's definitely on the harder side. I'm going to just kind of swatch a new pastel right next to okay these are softer than new pastels I was just kind of curious because some of the scratchier ones were giving me new pastel vibes I like new pastels but just for the sketching this one really gave me some issues in the peacock painting it was very scratchy even on the um it seems to have a art uh, coating on it but even on the side that I've worn back is still a little scratchy not terrible but it's uh I had a hard time kind of finding purchase on the paper with this. I'm probably being overly picky for the, the price of these, but oh, that one's nice and buttery. Kind of a little, almost like a cobalt green. I'm kind of curious on the pigment on that one. Let's see, that's, let's see, was it this one? 
Yeah. Uh, this is PG-7. Hmm. See, some of these, it seems like there's got to be other things in them besides just like an undisclosed white. But I guess that could be just the clay and the white that's giving it the color. That's a really nice one, that kind of mossy color. That's a little scratchy, but it's nice and opaque, so it doesn't bother me too much. These are also really kind of chunky sticks. so well, that's nice and soft. So you're probably more going to be basing in the larger areas. Um, because if you had to sharpen one of these down for a detail, you're going to lose so much product. I would use them in conjunction with a pastel pencil um, and a new pastel. Maybe even some, a few really soft ones like Schmincke or Sennelier or even Paul Rubens. But... Um, if you just wanted to buy, like, I, you wanted a really soft white and a really soft black, you could go with Sennelier or Schmincke, just buy those those couple colors you want and add them to your um, to your pastels, because I don't think you're going to find one set that's going to do everything. That gray's nice. That's really buttery. I like that. I hope this isn't boring. You can always skip ahead if, if you don't care about this. Um, I'm noticing that these are dusting up quite a bit on the ing the ingress paper, not so much on the mitants, and I didn't get a lot of dust when I was using the, on the mitants, and I think part of that is because of the texture of this paper. I think this more textured paper is grabbing more pastel, so it's another reason you have less, uh, you can have less dust with a textured paper, at least between these two and this particular pastel. That's a nice, like, kind of an olive, olive green color. You know, the texture can hold more pastel, the texture in the paper. That's a pretty gray. All right, so the grays do look a lot different from one another swatched out than they did, um, than they do in the box. In the box, they all look so similar, but you can kind of see the undertones a little bit better. And there is our black, which isn't really much of a black, but, um, uh, but there you have it. So, um... I'm going to grab a couple Paul Rubens because I'm, I'm feeling that the Paul Rubens were feeling a little... You can hear the kind of chalkiness to them, but they do seem to lay down. I think there's a higher proportion of clay. I'm just going to kind of section that off. Yeah, I think that the uh, the Paul Rubens might have a higher proportion of chalk and the, uh, the, the Arctics might have a little bit more clay, but not as much clay as some of the softer pastels, not as much clay as, say, the Soho. Um, and they're definitely not as buttery as a Schmincke or a Sennelier. I'm just going to do two side by side. Yeah, the, um, the Arctics definitely feel a little bit scratchier. If I had to pick between the two, I would go with the Paul Rubens myself. But um, you may have one may be a better deal in your country or uh, at the time you're watching it, you know, or maybe you prefer like a scratchier pastel. I don't know. Everybody's different. Um... But there we go, there are some swatches. I think I'm gonna fish around my pastel drawers, just kind of compare a few, see if I um, can find one that it's really similar to that I have, if I can remember what they are, because like I said, I don't have labels on it. Probably do another artwork on a different tone of paper and then come back and share my final thoughts. Right now, I'm thinking they're they're decent, they're not bad for the price, but I, there's other brands that I would pre I'd prefer the Paul Rubens or the Soho personally in this, in this price range. But uh, let me use them a little bit more to make sure I'm not missing something. And when we come back, we'll have final thoughts. I just finished this painting on the, I used the Canson XL sand grain paper because I figured that was a pretty popular and inexpensive paper. And if you're buying a set of, um, you know, mid to inexpensive range pastels, you probably would be using a paper kind of in the similar, uh, similar price point. Um, and it's fine, you know, it's fine. These didn't knock my socks off, but I definitely think they're, um, they're, they're nice. I would use them with the pastels I already have. I probably wouldn't use just this set by itself. So what I'll end up doing is taking these and putting them in my pastel drawers because on their own, just a set by itself is not the best of both worlds. This is going to be better with my other pastels. Like I'm going to want a softer white. I'm going to want a blacker black, but I might use that softer black for something else. You know what I mean? So, um, as a standalone set, I'm going to say probably not the best pick, but if you like trying a variety of different pastels, I think you'll enjoy this. Um, I did compare these to some of the pastels I had in my box, but like I said, 
that is an infallible um, comparison because all of my pastels have been broken down, labels removed. I'm not 100% sure on any of the pastels, except I am sure of one typical past, one type of pastel I have in my drawers because I feel a little bit different than the others and I didn't break them down and those would be the Mungio hand rolled pastels. These remind me a lot of the Mungio hand rolled pastels. Um, mine were full stick. Uh, which they're not quite as twice as long as this, but maybe just a little bit less than twice as long. Um, these remind me a lot of the Mungio pastels. In fact, I'm kind of curious where these are made because if they're made in Korea, it could be could very well be the same as the Mungio um, pastels. Does it say in the back, you know what? I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, but. I mean, they were fine. Obviously, I had to grab a little bit of white, my uh, Sennelier white. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my Schmincke white, because the uh, white was not opaque enough for me to go back in with highlights. But um, that's the only other color I added to that little cloudscape there. I just want to flip this over and see where are these made. Um... There's a... Designed by Shenzhen Artix Tech Limited, People's Republic of China. Oh, made in China. So yeah, they're not, I would say they're not Mungio then, but they do feel a lot like the Mungio hand rolled, um, the Mungio Gallery hand rolled pastels, if you've ever tried those. Very similar in feel, very similar in hardness, scratchiness and whatnot. They're not bad. They're just, uh, you know, I they're just, they're just going to be my pick. If you're my best friend and you're like, Lindsay, I want to get some pastels. I want to spend about 40 bucks. What should I get? Um, these probably wouldn't be what I tell my best friend. I tell them, um, well, what do you want? Do you want one set that's going to be all around, or do you plan on adding pastel pencils and maybe some other pastels to them eventually? If I'd say you, you know, recommend me a all around set that I could use for pretty much an entire painting and not really have to add to it, I would say the Soho pastels. Of course, there's no pigment information with those, so you're kind of taking a risk. Are these light fast? Are they not? Who knows? These actually have pigment information, so if, if pigment information was important to somebody, light fastness, I would say, okay, then you need to know what the pigments are. Um, you still want to keep it in budget? Well, this is a good this is a good option. Paul Rubens has the pigment information on their Amazon listing, at least for the larger set. I'm not sure about for both of them. So, I and I, and I personally prefer the feel of the Paul Rubens ones. I would go with the Paul Rubens myself. Um, but if somebody was curious about these, they're like, hey, I got 40 bucks to spend. I got a gift card. I want to try something different. Are these decent? I would say yes, they're decent. Um, this is the peacock I did with them. Uh, I think I think they're fine. I'm gonna like I said, I like them enough to put them in with the rest of my pastels, assuming I have room in my pastel drawers. But um, I think in this price point, they wouldn't be my my, my top pick. But there's certainly nothing wrong with them. And keep in mind, um, this is personal preference. A lot of it. Uh, I'll show you the swatches from my black and white paper, as well, just to. Uh, just so you have those again, because it can be a little deceiving to look at them, look at the printed swatch or look at them in the box and to look at my artwork because obviously the artwork is going to have, you know, just a few colors per, um, you know, I think, I think they're decent. I think they're, you know, well-priced, but the competition's stiff and I think it's just, there's just better options in my opinion, as someone who likes a softer, more buttery pastel. So, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I think I've left, I think I've put everything out there that, uh, that I have to say about these, but, um, I like that they offer the pigment information. It's a decent variety of colors, but, you know, if you already have a bunch of really soft pastels and you got a bunch of new pastels or pastel pencils and you want something in the middle, yeah, I mean, that would, that would do the trick for sure. I hope you found this useful. That's all I have to say about these. It's probably a longer video than it needs to be anyway. <laughs> Um, if you're looking for the tutorials for these two pieces, just keep your eyes peeled on my channel. I will post them so that you can check them out. If you want to learn more about pastels, I have a pastel class, um, a, um, a soft pastel workshop that's beginner geared at beginners. Uh, you can check that out. I'll put a link to that in the video description as well. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.